what about the importance of human factor concerning ATM? Well, certainly human factors in air traffic control is very important. Uh, myself, I was an air traffic controller for many years. And many of the principles that are being developed uh, to analyze behavior in cockpits can be applied readily to crews on the ground. Uh, this includes uh, techniques and procedures where uh, controllers can help catch each other's errors, uh, point things out before their problems. Uh, also, there are things you can do that uh, take a look at the uh, scheduling to make sure that uh, fatigue doesn't become an issue. Uh, because where you have air traffic control, you must maintain a high level of concentration. Difficult to do if you're fatigued, and certain rotations can do that. So it's a number of uh, things that are done in science, and a number of things that we can do, uh, can apply from other areas that can help us in air traffic control, and uh, we're in the process of doing that. So is it mainly a matter of training, or uh, is there anything that can be done for the um, operator's professionalism? Uh, and, and of course, this becomes a problem all the time as well. I mean, there was a famous incident where the uh, airline pilots in the United States forgot to, forgot to land. <laughs> yeah, and it was in all the, the world's newspapers. Yeah, uh, and and so over. people can neglect their jobs, and that's, that's serious. But uh, I think there uh, are other ways that we can keep people engaged in their job, change the way they're supervised, and again, uh, develop that safety culture we always like to talk about, where it becomes unacceptable to, uh, to not pay attention to your duties. And that can be better reinforced by the controllers, their peers, than it can even by their supervisors. Uh, pilot fatigue is an issue that's been studied for at least 20 years. Unfortunately, the subject is so sensitive, uh, both on the labor and the management side, that it's been very difficult to have an honest conversation. However, now we've reached a point where enough science has been conducted in the area of fatigue. So we have objective data that everyone accepts on what are the uh, things that can put us in a high risk for error and fatigue. So now that science is there, we can have an objective conversation about that science. Uh, that's happening both in, the, in Europe and in the United States. Uh, and the result are some rules that make a lot more sense. The original rules were very primitive. It was simply how much you could be on duty during a given period of time. It didn't address simple issues like, was it day or night? Uh, and, or what you've it's done simple. three days in a row. Uh, so now we go back and we can take a new account. Uh, we know early morning wake-ups tend to have a uh, accumulating effect on uh, your performance. And we can say only so many of those in a schedule. Uh, and we can also do things that maybe were illegal before. But now we go back and say, oh, these are perfectly safe. <laughs> because you're in the proper time of your sleep period, uh, you're able to perform well. So we're refining these rules. Uh, it's long overdue, honestly. It's been postponed simply because it was too politically difficult. And now I think we've overcome that.